Hi, this is Scott Wilkinson from .netnuclear.com. This is a special training video that I put together for my .NET Nuclear and DNN Hero followers who may have missed my session at this year's DNN Con event in West Palm Beach. The topic was on customizing the DNN search results. For some of my DNN Hero subscribers, some of the material may be a review, but be patient because I promise there are new things in here that I haven't even taught in any of my DNN Hero videos. So without further ado, let's get started. The first part of my discussion was on prepping for search. One of the most common questions I see on Q&A and, and other forums around the DNN search is about, um, you know, th things like, well, I why is my content appearing in my search results? My search results are empty, or I'm not seeing the right types of things in my search results. This is a checklist that I came up with that I use, I use myself whenever I'm configuring a DNN site uh, in order to get the, the information that I want into the search results. So first of all, page titles. Here is my, my demonstration site here. So all of my uh, pages I made sure have a proper page title here so that the search result comes up with the title that I want. Uh, the next thing, taxonomy terms. So if you go to the admin taxonomy and I added a new vocabulary, I just call it search tags, you can call it whatever you want. You can add multiple voca uh, vocabularies as well. The scoping website and inside of here I added a bunch of terms. So you just basically just click add term, enter it in, and just add a bunch of terms, which is just a series of words. And then when I go to the pages, so for example, the, I base this on my uh, TV shows here, so Cosby show page, I go to page settings, and then in here, the tags, I can pick from those taxonomy terms that I entered into the admin. And this will be important later when I show you how we can do f custom filtering. So we've got the page titles, the taxonomy terms, the page tags. Now the page setting, also on the uh, in here, the uh, allow indexing buried in the options under advanced. I think it's other settings. Here it is, allow indexing. This is checked by default, but you never know when upgrading a site or something like that. Maybe these got turned off for some reason. So just make sure that at the page level, you have allow indexing if you want to index that page. And also at the module level, there's a similar option. Again, in the module, uh, well, in the module options, but again, buried in the uh, advanced settings. So make sure that th those are both checked if you're wanting to get this content, this module content into your indexer. Then the other things we'll do is go to admin and the search admin, and there's a button here called reindex content. Now, what's confusing about this button and that most people don't realize is clicking on this button doesn't actually do anything with regard to the indexing. What it does is it resets the date that the incremental crawler will, will attempt to, to grab the module data. And what I, what I mean by that is, uh, because the crawler is incremental, meaning it only looks at new content that was published after a certain date, uh, if you have a brand new module or, or content that you're not seeing getting indexed, it's probably because the date of that data that got put in is previous to the date that the indexer is crawling at. So when you click on reindex content, it simply resets that date, but it doesn't actually change any of the content in the indexer. Once you click on this, you'll have to go to host, schedule, and it's the search site crawler is the job that actually goes and pulls data out of the modules and sticks it into the indexing for the site. So the combination of first clicking that reindex content button, which resets the date, and then going here and recrawling the site will then recrawl all of your pages and module content, and therefore it should appear in your site index. The next topic we talked about was filtering the results. These are three ways that we could filter the, the results in the existing core search. You can filter by tag, by source type, which would be like the module type, or by the updated date 
uh, using the after keyword, this would be after uh, any piece of content you want to see that has been updated after a day or after the last week or after the last month or by year. Let, let me give you a little bit of illustration on how this works. So I'm going to uh, put a keyword into the, the main site search and go to the main results page. Here we can, again, going back, let's try by tag. With the square brackets, if I add a tag in here, let's see, I think one was comedy. You can see that my search results are filtered by that tag. Um, Boston, maybe one of them, maybe not. Funny. So yeah, they're filtered by the tags. Now again, just like I mentioned before, you have to set it up, the taxonomy terms, you have to tag your pages with these tags, but then just you could just type these tags in here, and I, I believe you can e even do multiple tags, and you can filter the, the results that are, are tagged with those tags. The other one is by source type. Right now, I probably only have one or t one source type in there, maybe pages, and then I think I have most of them are pages, you can see here, and I think I do have some from this .NET Nuclear Search content, which is a custom module, which I'll show you later. But the way you do that is you type the word type, colon, and then pages. Notice that I typed it wrong. It's, it has to be an exact match. So as soon as I add that S, then it filters by just the pages of that type. And then again, you could do also, and the similar one is the after keyword here. So you can say after day, I believe. And that's only content that's been updated within the last day. Week should be larger. Month should get most of them. So these are interesting because, not, not because I'm showing you from the front end, but as we'll see later when we get to use the web API, that this exact same way of specifying a keyword plus a, a filter, uh, we'll, we'll use that concept in our modules using the actual web API that's behind this module, the core module. Now I want to talk about the web API. And what I mean by web API is the internal DNN framework services that are built into the core that we can leverage uh, in our own modules or in our own JavaScript. These web APIs are used by the core modules in the search. And the two that I'm going to show you are the this one here, the search input autocomplete. And then the next one will be the actual search results. I don't have a code or a demo for this one, but I do have one for the search results, but you, you could see, uh, you can at least get the idea from the search results. This one works very similar. So here is the URL for this API method. It is um, with internal services, search service, and then the API method's called preview. And you just pass it keywords and basically what the user typed in, and then uh, optionally a language. This gives you back this type of uh, object in JSON format. Uh, you get the do document type and you get an array of results. Each result will have a title, a snippet, a URL, and some other attributes. Where you could see this working is in this the main search box token here. When I type into it, it uses the look ahead. And this is using that web API to populate this list right here, which gives you a preview or, you know, we call it a type ahead or an autocomplete uh, of the search results, which then you can either click on one of the results, which will take you to that URL, or the see more results, which takes you to the main search page, which then uses the search API, which we'll talk about right here. So the search API looks very similar. It's uh, internal services, search service, and the name of the, the service is called search. It's similar to the uh, preview. You pass it the keyword phrase and the search parameter, but it also has paging. So you pass it the page index, page size, sort options. Sort options, I can give you a, a list of these uh, uh, maybe on the article when I go look them up, but zero means it's sorted by, which is the most common, means sorted by relevance. 
which would be the descending relevance, which most common way of sorting I would expect from search results, but you could also sort by other things like, like type and by date and things like that. This is the result you get back. Again, it's a JSON format. It's a little interesting here. You get two sets of results arrays. One is the outer array, which gives you the page results. And the other is the inner, inner array per page, which gives you module results. Not very common way of doing it, but you can kind of see how the, they're laid out in the front end based on what the result of the API is. This is the page level results. So the page name was 1980s TV shows, the page URL. And then these are the two modules that are sitting on this page. And so yeah, DNN has a little bit of a strange way of doing it. You can see again here, custom module, and you can see multiple uh, results in the module. Not a very common way of doing it, which is why I'm talking about this topic here, which in, in a moment we'll talk about how we can customize this. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this is the way it's done. It's by page and then by module. I want to talk a little bit about customizing the search results. And the way I did that and I, the way I accomplished that was through a simple module builder. And I have a page here where I put this custom search uh, onto the page. And again, this is built very simply. If you go to modules, create module, I have a tutorial on DNN Hero about how to use this custom uh, module builder. And um, I think it's under the Razor because uh, you can do a Razor development as well as just regular ASPX C Sharp module development with this uh, quick module creator. So uh, I wanted to show this. This will also be a download for you to grant. You can take all the code and, and you can install it yourself. It will be on my website. I'll have links to it on the DNN Hero page as well. Just as a quick demo, I created this search uh, simply by adding an input, a button, and a few little checkboxes here. This is a completely custom search, but it's using that sa same web API that the core search uses. So I'll type sitcom in here, which is the keyword I, I showed searching for before, and I get back the search results. It's laid out a little bit differently because I templated this myself, and this is what I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, I also incorporated a few check boxes here that, that are pretty, they're kind of static filters that are using tags uh, that I just showed you previously to enable that filtering. So if I click on that, basically what it's doing is the equivalent of what I showed you before is adding that tag onto the, uh, in, onto the keyword uh, before sending it onto the API. And uh, just like I showed you before, you can do you know one or two of these. It just appends those tags and those brackets in the API. Now the way I built this is if I go to Edit Page here, and I'm going to go you know how the module creator when you go to the this the module settings menu, there's this develop option, and I'll try to show it to you as big as I can. So just to show, this is all my module is. It's a view ASCX and a, it has a CS file. Now in the CS file, all I really do here, the only line of code that I actually do is this client resource manager register script. And that's just to register this um, handlebars library or this JavaScript library called handlebars. I haven't really talked much about this in DNN Hero yet, but it's handlebars is a simple JavaScript framework that allows you to template results or template a JSON object. And uh, it's kind of like the syntax of Angular it, or Mustache if you used it, it's very similar, but it's, it's only for templating. It doesn't have all the other bells and whistles and learning curve that Angular does, for example. So I'll show you a little bit of how to use it. And then the ASCX, here's where I build the front end. I've got this panel here that has the inputs that you just saw, the input, the button, the, the check boxes. I have this empty panel here called panel search results container. And then I have this script block here, but notice the script block is of type text handlebars. And it has a bunch of HTML in it more than it does any script. This is how handlebars work. So basically, if you define a script block, but put HTML in it with these special bracketed uh, you know, tokens, 
that's the way handlebars work. So these tokens will correlate to the JSON object that we compile into the template. So there's going to be an attribute in the JSON object called to total hits. There'll be an attribute called results or an object called results. Basically, this if statement is a handlebars contract that, that just says, okay, if this thing exists, then do you know what's inside here. We also have um, iterator type options. So this results is an object, but it's also an array. And we can iterate through that in a custom way. And then again, inside here, we can do, uh, this is a custom iterator, but this is a standard iterator just going through this each results. This is an inner, that inner results array inside the module and then you know again we just can lay out attributes that are inside this json object so it's a real simple framework that just allows you to take a json object which consists of maybe arrays and attributes and just lay them out in this html anybody can work with this even designers who don't even really know a lot about javascript or this framework can learn it really quickly and be able to lay out results for you then in the uh, JavaScript, we have this run search, which is what happens when you click the button. We're just doing standard DNN API services. Here I'm gra grabbing the internal services, that search service that I showed you, adding some uh, search, some, some hard-coded, in this case, query parameters to it, plus the term. And then I'm using a jQuery Ajax function to get the, or to, to, invoke the service, get the data, and then these three lines of code are all I need to compile that handlebars template and, it, and to do all those replacements in it. So the first one is using jQuery to grab the template. So basically this results template ID is the script ID here that has my template. And then I grab the HTML, put it in a source variable, and then I run this handlebars function compile into this template variable. And so now I'm ready to do the actual replacements. And that's done all in this one line of code right here. It's very simple. Template, which is my handlebars compiled template. And then I pass in to this function, the data, which is the JSON data that came out of my service. Now remember that JSON data, the way it looked was, let me see if I can go back to my slide here. Right here, you have a results, this is the page level results, and then you have a results array, and this is the module level results that has all the rest of the information, title, snippet, and various things. Here's that total hits. So if we go back in our template, that's gonna lay out all those things inside of here. So it's a real simple way to make this module work, and we're leveraging the DNN search API to do all these functions. One shortfall that I noticed was when you first do the search and you get back your snippet, for one thing, this is not accurate. 15 results, it's counting all the individual module results. So really what I would have to do is probably refactor that to just maybe in the handlebars template to count only at the page level. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, instead of actually 15. So I would have to refactor that. The other thing is, is when I, when I apply these filters, and is, this is the same when I showed you in the core search, it actually changes the snippet, which is kind of um, confusing, and I'm not, it's disappointing really. So maybe something I work on when I, um, maybe I'll send a pull request at some point and fix that. I really feel like that should just return the exact same snippet that you get you know, from the normal result that's in Lucene. The next topic I talk about is doing custom searches in modules. And this is getting at not the web API layer, but the actual core API layer. The example that I built is a module search, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually using the second um, core API here doing the module search. What I built here for you guys to play around with and actually download is an is extension of first my client centric demo. For my DNN hero subscribers, you know this one is basically the the item demo that is built into the Chris Hammond module template. I extended that to be a complete client centric demo 
which means it it's the same it's the same um, logic, but it's all built in the knockout web API approach where it's all done you know, as a client centric, a JavaScript to, to directly to services approach with no postbacks or server side code. So I started with the client centric demo. And then if for, again, for my DNN hero subscribers, I just did a recently a video on module search base implementation, which is how can you get your custom module data into the Lucene search? So I took the client centric demo layered in the module search base implementation, which means now my, uh, not only is my data uh, driven by knockout and web API services, but it also can get into the Lucene indexer. And, and then I took that and then I added this next implementation, which is the module search implementation of the search controller to be able to search within my module, but leverage the Lucene search engine so I don't have to actually build my own search. So let's see how that works. Well, I built this obviously as a, as a private assembly module project. And the main piece of code that's in here that for any of my DNN Hero subscribers that haven't seen yet is this piece of code right here that actually does the search implementation. So in this search query, first of all, let me show you a demo of this that might help. Here's the custom module. Initially, when it loads, it loads just the, uh, the list of items that are in this database. And this is as per my normal client-centric module video. So the first time it loads, go grab a listing of all the items in the database, and then give them back to the knockout layer and just list them out here. But the new thing I added was the search box right here. So if I was to search for a keyword, Notice that my search results are filtered. Let me try a more specific keyword. How about Rachel? I got two hits here, Friends and Seinfeld. So this is filtering my results. But what it's really doing is, since my module data is in the Lucene indexer, I'm going after that module data by querying it by keyword, and then I'm displaying the results from the indexer through a different web API method, and I'm rendering them on the screen. What's nice about this is I'm leveraging the Lucene engine, which means I can do any Lucene type, the Lucene search, not only is it fast, but it also has like wildcard type, you know, constructs and, and, and other things like that. We could also do tagging and tag filtering and, and, and various other things. So basically when I do the search, this is pulling up entirely Lucene results through my API, I'm never hitting the database to do this. Then when I clear it, I'm then back to where the, it is on the database. So let's see again how that works. This is the operation for the act, that actual button click event where it hits a web API and this is what happens. I'm building this search query object. I'm passing it my module ID, page size, page number or the page index, uh, the sort, I'm just hard coding the sort as the relevant sort. Uh, descending sort, and then the, the request term, which was whatever was in my text box, I'm passing it in through this request object. And then all it is is with one line of code here using the search controller.instance.module search and passing it the query. That returns an object of type search result. Let me go to the code here and I'll show you a little bit more on this. Here is my web API method for the search. This is my own web API method within my module that that button click is invoking. Again, just like you saw in my PowerPoint, this is the actual Lucene search that I'm doing here. And then there's a little bit of code in here. The, what I did was I, the Lucene search right here is giving back a, an object type search results. The search results contains an object called search result. And I'm looping through each search result. And I am I wrote this little private method here, or this, this static method here called convert search to search doc to item. Basically what I'm doing is converting a search result object to an item object. The item object is just my model data. So I'm converting the search result into that. And the reason I'm doing that is because what if I can return a list of items back to my search results, 
I already have a knockout implementation that, that can display a list of items. So really nothing had to change in the knockout implementation. All I had to do was uh, you know, call this different web API method called search. As long as I converted this search result to an item list, then all I had to do was just bind my item list just like I do uh, when the page first loads. So that part of the code was really easy and this is really the only big change to the code that I had to make was adding this new web API. These are the entities that you would have to learn. They're all in this .nanuke services .search .entities namespace. You have the search results. Then that search result contain or search results contains a search result. And that search result inherits from search document. The search document is really kind of what comes out of Lucene. That's, that's how Lucene talks in terms of that, that document object. That just refers to a singular result, right? It has the URL, the snippet, content title, all those different things. And then the search query kind of sits out here by itself, but this is just an object that allows us to encapsulate uh, the different, all those different things uh, that make up our search query before passing it into our search controller. This is just an illustration of what the search result looks like. Again, it inherits from search document. It has author name, dis modified time, score. So you could actually display the Lucene score to show users if it makes, if you, you want to, and the snippet. Uh, the search, like I said, the search document contains all the other items like URL and all the different things that are uh, really that mirror the Lucene index structure. That was pretty much the end of my presentation. I also just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all the sponsors. I, I always love going to these events, the day of .NET Nuke or DNNCon. Um, they're just a lot of fun, a lot of chances for people to network with each other and just, and just to learn from each other. Here are all the sponsors. I, I came with Bravo Squared, which is the sponsor right here. We're an enterprise developer of enterprise modules for DNN, and uh, as well as our uh, sister company, Blue Bolt, which is the uh, services area of that. I work full time for both Bravo and Blue Bolt. And I'd like to thank all the other sponsors, especially for uh, to um, Arrow Consulting for all their work to put together the event. So again, hope to see you at next year's event and uh, to see more of me. Uh, subscribe to DNN Hero, like I mentioned, and uh, follow me on Twitter at .netnuclear.com. Thanks a lot.